we talked about retrofitting refrigerants to R22. It's it comes up on skilled trade up and in my technician heyday, I did quite a few retrofits from R22 to R407C. And my retrofit guidelines were a little bit different than what many people thought the proper guidelines were. And here's what I did. And I'm always I'm going back to this because it has come up a few times recently and I feel like we should we should talk about it again because it does come up periodically since R22 costs, you know, a zillion dollars, it might come up again. So what I do is I take and let's go ahead, we'll bring up the chat alongside here too. What I do is I take out the R22 just like you normally would. But instead of removing all of the mineral oil, which is what you typically would do when switching to a 400 series refrigerant like 407C, I don't remove the mineral oil. I add a certain amount of POE oil. So what I would do is let's say there was a 20 ounce oil charge in a compressor. I might add five ounces of POE oil to assist in oil returning. And I have quite a few of these systems out there that I've been running for now. Jeez, I don't know. There's one that I need to service. The guy actually called me to service it. So it'll be really interesting because it's been like five or six years. It's been a long time since I switched this thing out. And I've done MO99, which is 438A, the new 22B, or new 22 is 422B, 422D, and there's probably another one, or that might be it. I've done all of those, and it seems like 407C is the best as far as capacity, retaining as much capacity as possible. And I'll, I'll show you why I think that's true here in just a moment. So again, my retrofit guidelines are add some POE, which is a whole lot easier than dumping out the compressor. Now, typically when you're doing something that's a whole lot easier, it's wrong. <laughs> it's just like a rule of thumb. If you go in there and you're just like, hey, I'm going to skip this step and just do it differently, where it takes me one third as long. And people are like, hmm, I don't think that is good. Hmm. Uh, Jerry Lockhart says, you get a punch card when you get 10 or 20, you win something. Now, we're going to be winning a big old prize. Trust me, it's going to be big, big, huge. It's going to be huge. Like like the Trump says, it'll be huge, huge. Yep. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to come back over here. We're going to have to go away from the, uh, unfortunately, the chat side here. We'll bring them back later. And this is a document from Honeywell. And I can actually put this in the chat too. I'm going to copy and paste. There we go. This is the document I'm looking at. You guys can look at it later if you want to. So this is on basically 407C and 422D. And as you see, there's a little table right here. And it says Genitron Refrigerant. It's Honeywell. R407C. Now, if you see what kind of refrigerants go into 407C, you can see why I think that the capacity is better or why I believe the capacity is better. And the justification for that statement is the R32, the A2L refrigerant. Huh. The A2L refrigerant that's out there being circulated as a refrigerant of the future. One of the two. R32, R125, and R134A. So if you're familiar with refrigerants, you can see R32 and R125. And that is basically 407, not 407, 410A. If it's a 50-50 blend of 32 and 125, that is essentially 410A. But as you can see here, they've added 134A. And the 134A is going to bring that pressure down to an R22 level. Now, it's not perfect, but it's closer. It's closer to R22. There's a, there's a few differences. There could be a higher head temperature on 407C, and the suction pressure typically runs a little bit lower. So that's a little bit of a scary thing sometimes. So, And here's what the thing says. It says oil change to POE. Now we're going to talk about that in a minute because I knew there was a document out there that supported what I did. And I almost believe that there was a few of us doing this back in the day. This is how narcissistic we are. I almost believe that there was a few of us back in the day that were doing this. And so Honeywell actually tested it and put it into their document. So we actually believe, and by we, I mean me, that we altered how Honeywell phrased things in some of these documents. Now that's probably not true, but I like, uh, yeah, I like them. Greg Meadows says, if it has mineral oil, why not use 422B? You could definitely use 422B. It was just my belief that the 407C was just a little bit better as far as capacity. So that's why I use 407C. And at the time, 407C was extremely cheap. We're talking about a time when 407C cost well below $100, and 422B would have been a couple hundred dollars. So I said, well, we just add a few ounces of POE, 
it's not that hard. You can actually let the vacuum suck it in there and stuff like that. It's pretty easy to put it in there. And then, bam, we're off and running there. But you could definitely use 422B. And speaking of 422 something other, right below the 407C, you see 422D. It's 125, just like the 407C has. Has 134A, just like the 407C, but there's one difference. Instead of R32, it has R600A. R600A is a hydrocarbon, meaning it's extremely flammable. But there's not that much of this hydrocarbon in 422D. And that hydrocarbon allows for oil return. Even though in the comment section here on this table, it says use of POE oil will enhance oil return if required. If required is like a general statement. You'll know it's required when your compressor dies. I guess that's what they're saying. But for 422D, you can see they've used a 600A to move the oil. That's why you don't have to necessarily use POE. That's why it says you don't have to necessarily use POE. The 125 is actually a high GWP refrigerant that's used as a flame suppressant. That's why it's in 410A mixed with the R32 because it suppresses that flammability. Just really interesting here. You go through this stuff, but the, the next paragraph is my favorite. I'm going to go back to the chat for a second because I believe, let me see here. I believe we have some chat comments. Let's see. I'm trying to find them here. Nathaniel Crumb says propane is R290. It is in fact R290. That is correct. R290 is propane. It is propane. If you're looking at R600, you're talking about the butane, isobutane stuff. Both of them are A3s, which is highly flammable. So they have that in common. R290 is a pretty good refrigerant. I mean, that's why they're using it in small quantities when they have like this refrigerated stuff and it's single component, which is really nice. When you look at something, and what I mean is, for those who might not be familiar with this, if you have a 400 series refrigerant, and let me go back over here again. You have a 400 series refrigerant, it's going to be multiple refrigerants put together. That means you're going to have a chance of fractionation. There's potentially more issues than if it's a single component refrigerant like R290 or R600A. R600A is used just like R290 in small quantities. Let's see. Uh, let me see if there's any more. Yep, yeah, R600A is in, there, in refrigerated appliances will have these hydrocarbons because hydrocarbons, and I don't know if this is, it's only a few ounces you can use. I won't speculate on the exact amount. I know it's only a few ounces in any system. And that's because of the flammability. Hey, and another good thing is you don't have to recover them. As long as you have a ventilated area to release them, they can just go back in the atmosphere. It's really, really nice. Uh, like Sulky86 says, I don't know of a single tech that owns a Nest thermostat. I don't think techs are allowed to buy Nest thermostats. I don't think techs will, will do it. That's like a big thing there. Big thing. Uh, Nathaniel says, I think propane can't be 16 ounces. Actually, I think it's less than that. I think it's like 5.3 ounces. I might be mistaken, though, because that could have been changed in the last two or three years. But I think it's single digits. Anyway, you can't use a whole lot of it is the uh, <laughs> the basic rule there. So let's go back down here and go to my favorite line in this thing. Okay. So if we come back down here, we see choose compressor lubricant. In most instances, the lubricant in use with R22 is a mineral oil or alkabenzene. Polyester lubricants are recommended for use with Genitron 407C by the equipment manufacturers. Well, that's good. Genitron 422D retrofit of a system with short connecting lines typically will not require an oil change or modification. Honeywell recommends using a miscible lubricant approved by the compressor manufacturer. In this case, POE is recommended for R422D. Differences among lubricants make it difficult to assume that they are interchangeable. Check with the compressor manufacturer for the correct viscosity grade and brand for the compressor in the system being retrofitted. Nobody does that. If the lubricant is contaminated or an acid test indicates high level of acidity, then a lubricant change is warranted. Okay, here's the best part. Field trials have indicated that adequate oil return can occur in HFC retrofit systems when 15% to 20% of the lubricant operating charge is synthetic oil. Systems with receivers or low, low side accumulators will require a higher ratio of POE to mineral oil. So what it's saying here basically is that if you have a certain percentage of your oil, even though if it's mineral is the lion share of it if there's a small piece of that 15 to 20 percent maybe a little bit higher in heat pumps of poe then you can change to r407c and it will function and they do it in a way they say it in a way where it's like we're not getting behind this totally but it, it'll work it's like a little wink that's what they're saying 
Field trials have indicated. Yeah, our field trials. That's right. They've been watching YouTube videos. That's their field trials. Hey, you're looking at the field trial, guys. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. And it worked great. And I look forward to looking at this system again. Really, really fun. And there's a little bit more information up here. There's something interesting here as well. Let me show you guys this. So I didn't know this under the replace the filter dryer section of this. It says when, ch when changing to an HFC miscible lubricant, particularly to a more polar lubricant, such as polyol ester, it may be beneficial to add a suction line filter. I have never added a suction line filter to one of these things ever. That's the first time I, you know, I should have read this probably. And that's a big duh moment. I should have read this, but I've never read anything that said that before. I don't, I just don't read. That's the problem. I don't read at all. So I don't know if you guys have ever done that, adding a suction line filter dryer for that. I, I never have, but something else it says, particularly to be, uh, it says when changing to an HFC miscible lubricant, See, I told you I can't read, particularly to a more polar lubricant. So I, I don't know what that means. Polar lubricant. What does that mean? So I looked it up and let's figure that out together. So I looked up polar lubricant and I went over to this place. It's ZEC or ZEC. I don't know what it's called. Lubrication. And it says, what is APM technology? Because I'm like, what is polarized lubricant? I don't know, but I got to figure it out. Are these people on this show going to be like, why don't you tell us what this crap means? So it says Zec lubrication oil additives use active polar mo molecule technology, which I assume is their like bullcrap name of just their polar technology or whatever to electrochemically bond a molecular layer to all metal surfaces that are lubricated by the primary lubricant. The result is a superior anti-friction, extreme pressure, anti-corrosive and boundary lubrication properties to meet the ever increasing high demands of today's harsh industrial applications. And I come down here and you see there's this nice picture of two pipes. One of them that looks like it's got Tyrannosaurus teeth because it doesn't have this polar lubrication on it. And another one that says how Zec lubrication technology works due to their ability to create an electrochemical bond with metal surfaces at a molecular level. Zec lubrication oil additives create a significantly lower coefficient of friction. This occurs because a bonded ZEC lubrication layer protects and prevents surface level microscopic jagged peaks. Now, I think that's probably exaggerated, jagged peaks. And I would wonder how much of the oil actually stays adhered to the piping with this bond. So whatever is going to cause the friction to lower is oil that is lost to the system, right? So I don't know. I'm not sure, but I did uh, enjoy learning what polar polar lubricant was because I've never really even thought about that. I didn't know that was a thing. Very interesting. So now you guys know all about this stuff. Now when you say there's a polar lubricant out there, it's polyester is polar lubricant. So it's adhering to the sides. Does that mean that it adheres to everything in the pipe? Wouldn't that make it, wouldn't that make it better? If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.